14 pterodactyls. My <laughs> estate has 14 pterodactyls flying leagues above your glorified giraffe chickens. All right, how did everything turn out tonight? Wow. He went straight off prehistoric there. <laughs> Mate, is that even allowed? <laughs> These idiots could not even manage to navigate a ship out of a port. <laughs> it's like night and day. Some didn't even know what the hell they were doing. At least for us nowadays who can sit in the comfort of our chairs and just witness the sheer lunacy that they were going through. Wow, this is great. Fucking love this. Blue Jay is a channel that I should follow. Ah, subscribe. And you should do too if you aren't subscribed to it yet. Strange Jewel in History. Ooh, that's some fun ones. Petty disputes are like taxes. They hit you when you least expect it and usually lead to some sort of criminal threat. Unlike today, where death threats can be made from the safety of your couch, the people of the past didn't have the luxury of the internet to keep their murderous desires at bay. Instead, yep. they resorted to a good old-fashioned duel to settle their differences. This glorious practice sent a strong message that no matter how big or small, any problem can be solved honorably with a little elbow grease and murder. But while <laughs> dueling is no longer available today, don't you worry champ, we have our alternatives. Hey, so actually, I, I said I didn't want any pickles. Ratio. What's, what's that gonna do? <laughs> L. But for some, a traditional. Yeah. The disastrous and destructive power of internet discourse. Duel can only bring so much excitement. You know how getting stabbed and shot at gets dull after a while. So today, we're gonna explore the stories of those who participated in some of the wackier duels in history. My favorite duel of all time is obviously from. I say obviously, pff, it's for me. Hamilton and Burr inspiring the story of Hamilton. And no, it wasn't an epic rap battle between Lin Manuel Miranda and somebody else. No, the actual issue was the involvement of Alexander Hamilton in the tie in vote between Thomas Jefferson and Era Burr, where that involvement and all that backfired, prompting them to duel with one another. But the issue being that much like the JoJo's family curse, the Hamilton family suffer from skill issues. Uh, yeah. Good old Flintlock duel. It's always great. And also, well, not straight up, but the way that the British Parliament tend to operate. You see, this distance that they have between each other was made so that they could just barely be able to pick up their swords without touching each other. The House of Commons procedure and practice actually has it as a footnote for the seating procedure. Bruh. That states that the distance across the floor of the house between the government and opposition benches is 3.9 meters, said to be the equivalent of two swords length. Because those nobles always used to carry swords. So yeah, <laughs> this distance was made so that they couldn't reach each other. <laughs> it's so freaking dumb. <laughs> It's well known that the French's two greatest contributions to the world are drinking wine with your pinky out and cartoony murder stories, such as the hot-headed man who headed the headhunt after beheading the head of state while heedlessly spearheading his headless demise. Yep, Maximilien Robespierre. Inventor... Uh, he didn't invent it. The war stopped before, but he encouraged, for the most part, the use of the guillotine and fell himself to it. He was funny. He was a fun revolutionary, but then the, the power took over um, his mind as he lost the support of the Jacobin movement and they were like, bruh, <laughs> don't you think that you're overdoing it? No, we should execute everybody who stands against us. They were like, nah, you're being way too cartoonishly villain, even for a Frenchman. Eyes. But reigns of terror aside, the French are legendary for their use of duels to settle their disagreements. Everything from political differences to whose mustache best represents a kick-ass roller coaster. So when Monsieur de Grandpre and Monsieur de Pique found out they had both been seeing the same woman, a duel was short to follow. Okay. The year is 1808, and the renowned dancer at the Paris Opera, Mademoiselle Tervit, was dating Grandpre but began to see Le Pique on the side for a little extra baguette. Oof. Both men laid claim to the woman, because it's the 1800s and before Beyonce you could still do that kind of thing, agreeing to a duel to win her heart. But given the grand nature of the prize, so too must the duel itself be elevated. Literally. Oh, if it is the woman you want, Monsieur de Pique, a duel you must have. May the third, the crack of dawn, we duel. You're on, Monsieur. Oh, putain, I have a balloon race that day. We will make it work. It was decided that the- Oh, no, on the Mongolfier. Are you kidding me? 
No shot. No shot that they did that. The only way to settle the dispute was with a duel in gas balloons. Why must the men fight to the death thousands of feet above Paris? No clue. Maybe they thought the Fire Nation had the right idea. But if anything, we can thank the French for pioneering the steampunk genre. The idea nice. was to take a month to build identical gas balloons, ascend into the air, and take turns firing at each other's balloons with a blunderbuss, a predecessor to the modern shotgun. On May the 3rd, 1808, as crowds gathered for what they thought was a balloon race, both men ascended in their balloons with their seconds who were to act as co-pilots. Traditionally, the role of a second is to mediate the duel, as well yeah. as attempt to defuse the situation entirely to avoid bloodshed. In this case, on top of their usual duties, the seconds were literally prepared to die if their guy lost. That or maybe they misinterpreted the term wingman. <laughs> Say what you will about the French, but they always got their homies' backs. Rompre, look around. It's so peaceful up here. Kinda makes your whole love triangle problem seem kinda small, huh? Yeah. You know what? You're right. HEY! What? I think I want to go down! You dare call me a clown? No, I said I want to go down! No, you're going down! Uh, fu- <laughs> My home! Marie! Marie, are you okay? Well, at least my own air is restored. At about half a mile up, a signal was given and the duel commenced. Le Peak fired first and miraculously mile. missed the giant balloon. Grandpre followed with his shot, which hit its mark, sending Le Peak and the second plummeting to the ground who were then, quote, dashed to pieces on a housetop. Th that's the quote. A fitting end, because anyone with aim that bad is bound to be a nuisance at urinals and thus deserves to die. It should be noted that the authenticity of the story is a little questionable. The earliest record of the story that I could find was in a British newspaper a few months after the fact. It's also mentioned mm -hmm. in a book by a proclaimed authority on duels. I even went as far as to ask a duelist historian about it, who said while he doesn't necessarily doubt it to be true, he has no reason to be certain it isn't apocryphal. So this story okay. gets filed under, it may not have happened, but the world's more fun believing it did. So anyway, whether or not Grumpre actually ended up with Tirvit is unknown, but I like to imagine he realized that if he should love anyone, is the one willing to put his life on the line so that his bro can get laid. So what could possibly follow up Balloon Tower Defense France edition? That's right, the French again. Back during the French Restoration, there existed a lot of tension between the former soldiers of Napoleon's army and the bright and shiny Royal Guard. And considering the French tend to be quite honest and direct with their thoughts, quarrels are rather expected. Which shouldn't be too surprising. It's such a problem that they literally developed a career dedicated to silence. Yeah, One name. such quarrel occurred when Colonel Babier Dufay trod on the toes of the young Captain Raoul de Vere of the Royal Guard and insulted his cockade. Get your mind out of the gutter, it's a hat ribbon. <laughs> but apparently in 19th century France, yeah, mocking yeah. a glorified knot was akin to spitting on an orphan, because Raoul was so insulted that only blood could remedy such a dishonor. He challenged Dufay to a duel, offering up the rapier, sword, or pistol as the weapon of choice, whichever Dufay preferred. This surprised the colonel, who was all like, oh shit, so you've mastered all these? To which Raoul responded, uh, no, I'm 18. Seeing as how Dufay wasn't a fan of Fortnite, he wasn't all that interested in murdering children that day. But as he began to walk away, Raoul placed his hand on the colonel's cheek, which sounds really touching at first until you- uh, uh. You realize that's just fancy olden talk for giving him the old airplane treatment. And yep. thus, a duel with rapiers commenced. They faced off in the street, where the more experienced Dufay proceeded to easily disarm Raoul four times. Okay, stop. No, down. Put it down, boy. This is pathetic. I'm not an assassin. You have not bested me yet, good sir. Uh, uh, Raul, uh, you Okay, fine. Moron. You hell bent on a fight to the death? You insulted my cooked! Jesus Christ. Okay, uh... Buffon. Let's make things interesting. <laughs> Apparently, four consecutive disarms wasn't enough to solidify a victor, so DeFay proposed that they should, and I'm not making this up, tie their left arms together, enter the back of a coach, and stab each other to death with daggers. Because you know what they say, if you can't win with a sword four times, try fast and furious. I'm sorry, what? Uh, that, that, that's... That's insane. You're an officer. You, you could have... No, 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 no. At this point, I don't give a damn. Oh, no, oh, no. I'm not about to kill a kid because he's too hot-headed. <laughs> Come on. ...with knives. This was thought to be the perfect solution, as it would ensure no one could escape. So the seconds took over for the carriage driver and began driving their pre-routed two laps around the plastic carousel. And if there's anyone to feel most sorry for, it's them. <laughs> Wait till you see my spin move. I made this move myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining just uh, like passerby being like, 
Mais qu'est-ce qui se passe là-dedans Non, non, il n'y a rien. Il a rien. Ils font l'amour ou quoi Translating. There's passerby uh, imagining that they're perhaps having sex. <laughs> In a bit of a violent manner there. Rest now. So did Raoul finally catch his break, redeeming his honor solely by the insult to his cockade and numerous disarmaments? <laughs> no. No, the lad was very dead. Dufay also appeared to be dead at first, having been stabbed four times in the chest, but he ultimately recovered from his wounds. Some accounts claim that he later died from his injuries, but the majority of the sources I consulted state otherwise. Plus, as we all know, it takes 37 stabs in the chest to kill a man, so if we learned any value- <laughs> Oh my god, I haven't watched that lava video in like ages. <laughs> Carl! <laughs> Carl! Oh, what did you do? <laughs> You're not supposed to stab a man. <laughs> yeah, now we have to watch it. Valuable lessons from this encounter. It's, uh. Moving on from France, we have a story that takes place on the other side of the English Channel. On a cold winter's evening in 1765, the two cousins, neighbors, and friends, Lord William Byron and William Shawworth, were enjoying their weekly dinner at the Star and Garter Tavern in London. It started off pleasant enough, just two blokes enjoying a chinwag, having a laugh, you know, British things. But as the <laughs> wine continued to run, so too did their mouths. A conversation began on the proper way to hang birds after they were shot, which soon transitioned into whose estate held the most game- uh, that is so British. You're gonna insult the waiter that carry me birds. Yeah, I was just thinking about that game. Yeah, what a fit bird she is. But she didn't hang right. What do you mean she didn't hang right? You're supposed to hang her by her right wing, you bellend. What did you say about my mom? I said nothing about your mom. <laughs> your mom's a slack, you idiot. Then they just go on and on and on. Because they are just too fucking rich. Birds. But little did they know, they were both red at heart. And what began as some harm. Ha, that's a good one. Yeah, it's literal cock measuring contest. Harmless boasting rapidly escalated as neither side would back down. You see, Byron, at my estate, we roll the wings up like crescent rolls and hang the bird from the claws. <laughs> well, it only makes sense coming from an estate like yours. What do you mean by that? Oh, only just that you obviously lack proper experience with an estate so devoid of game birds. <laughs> this coming from the bloke with only 20 pheasants on his estate. 29? And please, you don't have more than a handful of quail in your brush. Good sir, my estate is brimming with quail, along with dozens upon dozens of red-legged partridges. You have as many partridges as you have admirers, you wazzock. Meanwhile, I've got 18 <laughs> capercaillie roaming my backyard. Motherfucker, <laughs> call him a wazzock. Nice. I've got 17 ostriches. Yes, 17 ostriches that run circles around your pathetic capercaillie. 14 pterodactyls. My <laughs> estate has 14 pterodactyls flying leagues above your glorified giraffe chickens. All right, how did everything turn out tonight? Wow. He went straight off prehistoric there. <laughs> Mate, it's not even allowed. <laughs> Wonderful. Say, could you show us to a room? The argument escalated to the point where they drew their swords and asked the waiter to show them to an empty room. The waiter returned after hearing a lot of commotion to find Shawworth gravely injured, with Byron's sword driven firmly through his gut, proving once and for all that Lord William Byron had the most birds. Or something like that. Yeah, Shawworth sure. lived for a full day before he died, during which he claimed that he only regretted that the room that they dueled in was so dimly lit and thus caused his defeat. Basically the equivalent of saying, I lost because he had a good gaming chair. After his cousin's <laughs> death, William Byron was put on trial for murder before the House of Lords, during which they asked him, are you guilty of the felony of murder? To which he responded, nah fam. And so they found him guilty of manslaughter instead. While normally you expect people to regret their stupid decisions, Byron proudly mounted the sword that slew his friend in his bedchamber, and later would earn the nickname, The Wicked Lord. He ultimately got off with just a small fine, showing that as long as the honor of bird lovers is at stake, and you happen to be a lord, you absolutely can put a price on human life. Of course, if you have the means for it, then you can always escape that judgment. Life. Oh, hey Life Lesson Leopard, what wisdom do you have for us today? Dwell not on the grievances past, for that which festers blooms with thorns, and those whose minds dwell to the last shall find their doom. This Very leopard wise. Warns. Okay. What? You want money? You want to keep those wings? Jesus, okay, here. <laughs> I could have taken them. What was that? Da, 10 out of 10 stars. <laughs> that was hilarious. The duelist of the past. Absolute mad lads. <laughs> <laughs> 